Hello and welcome to The Softer Side. I'm your storytelling life coach, Shelley Carney. Today we're going to talk about how the past was perfect. Thank you for watching The Softer Side, storytelling therapy and life coaching. Please leave a comment and let me know your biggest challenge when it comes to stress relief and what topics you would like to see in the future. Subscribe and click on the bell to be front row center for new videos. Join us in the friendly, supportive live chat room for our live coaching videos and share the Softer Side channel with your friends and family members who need to reduce the stress and anxiety in their lives. So how do I mean by the past was perfect? Well, one of the ideas that we can embrace to reduce stress, anxiety, and suffering is this. My past happened exactly as it should have. It brought me to where I am today, and I fully accept and appreciate everything just as it happened. That's a difficult idea for a lot of people to accept because maybe in their past they experienced some trauma or some abuse and they have to say, how is that perfect? How did that help me? You know, I, you know, I was a child or I was a young person and these things happened to me and it was a very bad situation. How can I accept that that was perfect? It's a very difficult concept, yet... We're going to discover that when we accept the past as being perfect, then we can have peace today. We accept reality, right? Reality is what it is. We can fight against it or we can accept it. When we fully accept reality of what is and what has been and release our attachments to it, then we can become free to live in the moment and take massive action toward a bright and beautiful future. We accept reality through grace, um, through a, our determination to achieve peace and to let go of what was so that we can be in the now. When we let go of what was and we're fully present in the now, that's when we can find happiness and peace. So that's our aim. So let's take a, take a look at the story, um, starting with the wisdom of the I Ching. A situation only becomes favorable when one adapts to it. So what does that mean? Let's see, what does that mean? Here's what Wu Wei says. As long as you are angry or upset over an event, you will be unable to perceive its beneficial aspects, and you may wear yourself out with unnecessary resistance. The way you respond to the event determines its final outcome in your life. I think Wu Wei has a really strong grasp of this um, idea, and that we can accept that what happened is in some way beneficial to us. We look for the gift that we received from that event. So say something really unfortunate happens. It seems unfortunate, right? Good thing, bad thing, who knows? Um, maybe somebody gets sick or gets hurt. How is that going to be beneficial? How is that going to be helpful? But then you hear of these people who um, maybe they discover that they have cancer or a heart condition and it slows them down and they start to take time to really focus on their health, really focus on their selves and their, their, uh, their connection with their family and their friends. And it totally changes their life in a very revealing way of who they are and what their life is really all about. And then they look back years later and they say, you know, that's one of the best things that ever happened to me. And people say, what? That can't be right. That's That doesn't sound right at all. You were very sick. Yes, but it was a wake up call and it made me realize what's really important. So 
there are many ways to look at each event that happens to us in our lives. If we look at it in a ben- as it was to our benefit, then we're going to be able to have peace with it. Let's take a look at um, what Byron Katie said. Uh, Byron Katie, the author of Loving What Is, Four Questions That Can Change Your Life. And she said, I am a lover of what is, not because I'm a spiritual person, but because it hurts when I argue with reality. All the stress that we feel is caused by arguing with what is. And when I argue with reality, I lose, but only 100% of the time. So Byron Katie is a very wise person and tells us that when we argue with reality, when we argue with the past, when we say things like, um, you know, my best friend was so mean to me, what she should have done instead was this. That's me arguing with the past. That isn't productive. It isn't going to change what happened. I can just look at it from a new perspective and say, my friend did this to me, I was hurt at the time, but here's what I learned from it, and here's what that did for me today, and put myself in a better position, and the position of the hero of the story instead of the victim. So what we want to do is believe that the event occurred for your benefit. Manage your thoughts look at the positives, take the learnings, and separate yourself from those old feelings. Then we can experience good feelings. When we believe positive, we feel positive. When we believe something happened to our benefit, we can start to look for those positive outcomes that came from that experience and we can feel good about what happened. And then we can continue to act on those good, positive feelings and bring about more good things. We can say, you know, what I learned was this and that's going to serve me in the future. Let's get into our story. This story is called The Author's Tale and it begins in a small town on the border of England and Wales. There was a little family who lived there in the house together and as they were growing up they had a good life but there was some overshadowing caused by the mother of the family was very sick. She had a debilitating disease and it affected the children because it made them afraid that she may die. And so they always had that fear and lack of security because of that. We're going to talk about Joanne. Joanne was between college graduation and the pursuit of a life's passion with the beginnings of her first novel coming together in her head. This is Joanne. She was the child in that family. She's growing up. She graduated college and she wants to become a writer. And she has an idea in her mind for the novel that she wants to write. Then the, the thing she was fearing for most of her life happened. Her mother died. It was the most traumatizing moment in her life. And It was New Year's Day, so she'll always remember New Year's Day as the day her mother died. When she was 25 years old, this happened, and it was devastating to her. It was so devastating to her that she began to write about things that were going through her mind. She wrote them into her characters in her book to relieve that sadness. She was quoted years later saying, My books are largely about death. That's how much this event affected her. She was devastated by the death of her mother and she was looking for a fresh start. So she moved to Portugal to teach English. There she met some new friends and she would go out with them in the evening and then she would spend the mornings writing her novel 
and the afternoons teaching English. And this was her life until she met a man. And this man was her boyfriend. And she moved in with him and his mother. And she became pregnant. Well, she lost the baby due to a miscarriage. And she continued to stay with him and his mother. And she married the man. And they had a very difficult turbulent relationship. One day, her husband harshly slapped Joanne and threw her out of the home without her baby. She was distraught. This was her only connection to family, was her child at this point, because she had moved away to another country All she had was her husband, his mother, and her baby, and he had turned against her. Well, she went to the police, and with the police, they went back to the home and retrieved the baby, and she took the baby, and she moved with her daughter back to England. Joanne was penniless and harboring thoughts of suicide while relying on family and friends to get by spending her days at her brother-in-law's cafe with her baby girl by her side she continued creating a new world in her manuscript i imagine she must have wanted to create a world very different from the one she was living in and yet all of the things she wrote were colored by her current emotions joanne found herself increasingly despondent angry over her failures and feeling guilty about her inability to provide for her daughter. As a reminder of her mistakes, her ex-husband showed up in an attempt to reconcile until she obtained a restraining order against him. You can imagine that Joanne was feeling very scared um, and worried and trying to be a good parent for her baby And then her ex-husband came into her life and she had to be strong and repel him because he was abusive and she didn't want that in her life and she didn't want that for her daughter either. So she had to obtain that restraining order and I'm sure she relied a lot upon her friends and family to give her strength during that time. Her outlook improved after therapy, and she made the decision to complete a one-year teacher training course. Upon completing her manuscript, Joanne followed through with her plan for teacher certification while diligently searching for literary representation. So she went to therapy, she finished her book, and she got the support from her therapist, her family, and her friends to think of what she could do for her future to make money to support herself and her child. She decided to go into teacher training. She already had her college degree, so a one-year certificate would allow her to become a teacher. A three-chapter sample of her writing uh, helped her to secure a London agent, though the regional publishing houses rejected her work a dozen times. Any entrepreneur or writer, anybody in this position knows how difficult it is to continue on to finish a project like this massive project that took her years to complete that first novel. And here she was finally getting a literary agent and putting that book out to the publishing houses and she was beginning getting rejected again and again and again. How disappointing that must be. How how devastating that she didn't think she was going to be able to sell this book that she had put all of her energy and thought and time into over the past several years. Finally, the author saw her hard work come to fruition with the publication of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in the UK. She was now known as J.K. Rowling due to concerns about how boys would respond to a female writer, but the name change was fitting in that her life of anonymity was about to end. So you can see that Joanne completed her journey. She 
made it to publishing her first book about Harry Potter. And you know if you've ever read the book or seen the movie uh, that there is a lot of drama. There's a lot of feeling uh, in these characters are very developed. And she put a lot of herself into this book. J.K. Rowling was a billionaire by 2004 when Hollywood was still only halfway through eight Harry Potter films and well before the launch of another lucrative franchise, Fantastic Beasts. And while her life looks charmed from the outside, the author no doubt carries the reminder of her years as a struggling single mom wherever she goes. The very best thing her wealth has given her, she wrote on her website, is the absence of worry. She is quoted as saying, I have not forgotten what it feels like to worry whether you'll have enough money to pay the bills. Not to have to think about that anymore is the biggest luxury in the world. What do you think? Did J.K. Rowling's life go exactly as it should have? Should she regret or argue against her past experiences? Or did they add to the drama and intrigue that went into her best-selling books? J.K. Rowling definitely wouldn't be the writer that she is today if she hadn't gone through those very difficult times. Writers seem to need that um, difficulty, that, that those obstacles, so that they themselves can live out that hero's journey that they're writing in their characters because that's how we truly understand the hero's journey is by living it ourselves, right? When we can look back and say, well, I got through this obstacle and then a bigger one came along and then I got through that and a bigger one came along and then I got through that and a bigger one come along until I finally, finally pushed past all those obstacles and I made my dream come true. Our heroes do that. They stick with it until they get to where they're going. And that is so important for all of us to remember to do for ourselves. When we have a dream, when we have a desire, when we have a goal, sticking to it no matter what, taking massive action on that goal until, until we achieve it and not stopping, no matter what, not stopping. Okay, but let's take a look at what that means for our past. Our past got us to where we are now. And what we do today is tomorrow's past. So let's make it perfect. Let's accept where we've come from and all the things that got us to where we are now. Because we can use all of that learning that we are doing from our past, we can put all of that to use today to move into our future. So let's accept that the past was perfect and happened exactly as it should have happened. And it made us who we are today and be grateful for it. I'm going to be grateful for my past and I hope that you will be too. And I thank you so much for being here with me today to learn about how the past was perfect. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And for the softer side, I'm your storytelling life coach, Shelley Carney. I want to share with you an amazing free mini course I've developed for my subscribers to reduce stress and achieve inner peace. This mini course provides tips, exercises, and guided meditations to further enhance relaxation and bring calm to a frazzled life. Simply visit eSofterSide.com to get your free mini course. And while you're there, you can also schedule a free coaching call with me to address your personal needs when it comes to releasing pain and achieving happiness. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace be with you. Namaste.